Welcome to Lesson 15. Our subject for this lesson is what Whitehead calls the withness of the body. Whitehead believes that Western philosophy has focused too much on visual perception at the expense of other forms of experience. He believes that we can learn about the universe from bodily experience, too. Bodily experience involves being touched by the world around us and by what is happening inside our own bodies in a visceral way. Whitehead calls it experience in the mode of causal efficacy. In being touched in this way, we are directly moved or influenced by something other than ourselves. We can be touched psychologically as well as sensorially. We can be touched by the moods and feelings of others as well as by their appearances. When we are touched psychologically or physically through our senses, there is, for Whitehead, a physicality to our own experience. This is because in being touched or moved or influenced by something other than ourselves, we are affected and changed by what we experience in a direct and energetic way. We are causally influenced. Causal efficacy, then, is a form of prehending. To prehend the world, you remember, is to feel the presence of something else. It is to take the world into account from a particular point of view. We can prehend with our feet, with our eyes, with our bodies. Experience in the mode of causal efficacy is different from experience in the mode of presentational immediacy. Whitehead uses the phrase presentational immediacy to refer to a mode of experience in which we scrutinize the world from a distance, a detached perspective. Often we do this in visual experience. But even in visual experience, our bodies are involved. We see the world with our eyes. We hold the binoculars with our hands. Always our bodies are involved. From Whitehead's perspective, we arise out of our bodies. They are, in his words, the stubborn facts of our immediate, relevant past. Our bodies give us a knowledge of the world. Whitehead writes, the sense perception of the contemporary world is accompanied by perception of the withness of the body. It is this withness that makes the body the starting point of our knowledge of the circumambient world. Our bodies give us a sense of location. Whitehead writes, a traveler who has lost his way should not ask, where am I? What he really wants to know is, where are the other places? He has got his own body, but he has lost them. From Whitehead's perspective, there's also a sense in which the whole world is our body. Whitehead writes, the body is only a peculiarly intimate bit of the world. Just as Descartes said, this body is mine, so he should have said, this actual world is mine. My process of being myself is my origination from the possession of the world. Skin, for example, is one way that we're connected to the world and that the world flows through us into us. Skin not only separates, but also connects. If God exists, think White, thinks Whitehead, then God's body will be the universe as a whole. Now, Whitehead does believe that God exists, and he does think that the universe as a whole, in any and every dimension, is, in a way, the body of God. He writes, the consequent nature of God is composed of a multiplicity of elements with individual self-realization. In the image that you see here with the stars and the planets and the galaxies, all would be part of the body of God. All would be among the multiplicity of elements with agency of their own which compose God's body. So the question emerges for us, are mind and body identical? For Whitehead, the mind is a stream of experiences extending from birth to death, each of which in receives influences from the body and world and then coordinates responses. The mind is not precisely identical with the body, but not separable from the body either, at least in most of life as we know it. The body, of course, ages over time. 
Aging can be part of life's beauty. There is no need to always look young. A key to health is not having a healthy body all the time. Ultimately, that's impossible. But having a healthy relation to one's body, whatever the state of one's body. This means that the mind transcends the body to a certain degree. The mind can have different attitudes toward the body, ways of relating to the body. And these ways can affect mental health and also, of course, physical health. This is the wisdom of psychosomatic medicine. Then a question emerges, well, what happens after we die? I have said that the mind is not separable from the body in most of life as we know it. Some Whiteheadians, however, and Whitehead to some degree, was open to the possibility that the mind continues after death, after even the death of the brain. This would mean that the stream of experiences which con constitute the self or the mind or the psyche or the soul somehow enjoy a continuing journey. In that journey, the question would emerge, do we have bodies in that journey too? Are there spiritual bodies, which are somewhat like, but somewhat unlike, the physical bodies of this earth? What happens then? Eventually, do we become one with the very soul of the universe, with that mind whose body is the universe itself? These are questions that emerge out of a Whiteheadian consideration of the body. But the point of this lesson is to say that our bodies are very important, very beautiful in their intricacy and complexity, understandable in many different ways, different forms of science, different forms of medicine, Western and Asian represent different ways of thinking about and understanding dimensions of the body, and that our bodies are with us and part of the beauty of being finite. Thanks for joining me. Looking forward to our next lesson.